Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Okay, now we're on. Are we recording? We're recording on the main camera, we're recording on the live camera, and are we working? And hopefully I'm recording the chat inside. Have we got some video lag? Everyone give me thumbs up, thumbs down on video and audio. Five by five. Yeah, video looks better than last time. It should. It's a brand new Logitech C905 webcam, so it should look a lot better. <clears throat> video lags, but that is normal here. Yeah, the vi actually the video seems quite laggy on my end too. I'm not sure what's uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Even on even on my local monitor here. Go figure. I don't know. Sorry, it's um. Yeah, I have no idea whatsoever. Um. Someone's giving thumbs up audio and video, so I guess we're just going to have to go with it. Otherwise, we'll. Run out of time sorting out uh, technical issues. How many viewers have we got? 21 viewers, 17 guests. <clears throat> All the regular suspects are in. Thanks for joining me, guys. <clears throat> 33 at the moment, 18 guests. Excellent. Awesome. Are we on Jerry's show again? Like we were last week, which I didn't actually realise until I um, recorded, until I went to edit the thing, because I I didn't actually see it in the chat. <clears throat> oh, it's a holiday in the US, is it? What holiday? Oh, July four, the July fourth holiday. Oh, of course, I had no idea. Happy July fourth holiday, all my US viewers. Independence Day, of course, of course. Sorry, had no. Uh, that's why we've got less than half of the viewers we did last time. Oh, I thought it must be me. Just oh, video freeze. Yeah, this is retarded. Um, <clears throat> yep, yeah, it's back. No, sorry, I have no idea what's uh, causing all the issues on the video, but we'll just have to run with it because um, it's a live show, so. Ah, oh, well, video's going nuts. Best way to spend the holiday. Thanks. <clears throat> Bit torrenting much? No, <laughs> I'm not, uh, I'm not le leeching any other um, content at the moment. So I'm not sure what my bandwidth, the internet wasn't working this morning. I had all sorts of issues and, oh, I don't know, rebooting galore. And I finally got on. Um, I wasn't too late, so <laughs> that's not too bad. <sighs> Did you get the new codec? No, I completely forgot about that. Sorry, I completely forgot about the new codec. I won't do it now because, um, yeah, I'll just blame Telstra. Bastards. Bunch of dickheads. Um, yeah, sorry, no, I should have got the new, um, oh, should have got the new codec. <laughs> Still in the neighbor's Wi-Fi again. Not quite. Anyway. I've got my sipper bottle again. We're not going to have any video freeze. Ah, oh, this is getting boring. This live stuff really just doesn't work properly. There you go. I've got my video. Um, got my water bottle again. Got to keep myself hydrated. But the good thing is everyone can still hear audio. So you know, that's it. Oh, hey, questions have started. Um. By the way, if you're going to ask a question, can you please put, um, oh, hang on, what's going on with the chat here? Can you please put, oh, uh-oh, can you please put a Q with a colon in it so it pops up with that um, blue question thing, because that's easier for me to read, although we don't have too many people today, so it shouldn't be too bad. <clears throat> So is there going to be a $200 shootout? Yes, there is. I have recorded um, about 70% of it, maybe 
it's almost there. Um, I just need to film a, a, a few more segments, um, and it's almost there. So hopefully it'll be blog number 99. Um, this one, oh, actually, it, it might not, because it depends if I upload this one. This one becomes 99, and uh, so it might be blog 101, I don't know. But um, yes, it should be the next one. Um, after I uploaded, because I did 98 last night, which is still not in my rush this morning. I didn't have time to put it up on the um, put it up on the main blog website, um, but it is up on YouTube if you want to go see it. Blog number 98, which is about the new Microsoft InstaLoad battery technology. I haven't even looked to see if anyone's if if it's up or not. But um, I uploaded it before I went to bed and last night, and it should be on YouTube, um, hopefully. So, it, yep, it's up, is it? Cool. Oh, sorry, 200. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> the $200 shootout. Um, I have no idea. I was, I hadn't planned one, but I was supposed to get the uh, Agilent um, U1242B, I think it is, meter from um, Agilent, and that's about the $200 mark, and that's one of the, that and the, uh, I guess the, the only competitor is the X-Tech um, EX340, I think it is. Um, they're sort of two of the main meters in the $200, um, $200 bracket without going to PC-based, you know, data logging, um, cheap, you know, UNI-T data logging ones or something like that. Um, so, I don't know, I have to get back onto Agilent because my contact at Agilent changed um, and yeah, I was lucky to get the the LCR meter one and um, uh, yeah, so that, um, yeah, I just have to get back onto them if I want to do a $200 shootout, but geez, still trying to um, finish the $100 one, so there you go. Mm. Do I have any... Um, Is a hundred dollar one going to be sweary spectacular? I no, I haven't sworn too much. They're all quite reason. Oh yeah, the X Tech one um, uh, failed in one aspect. I can't remember what it was, and I gave it a bit of a serve. But they're all pretty good. Um, I don't know which one's going to win it. Actually, I, I'm probably going to have to do a big cop out on the hundred dollar one and just say, well, which because they've all got different little. Um, pros and cons, so I um, might have to cop out and maybe not declare an overall winner, I don't know yet, but people might be in uproar over that, but it, it really is um, tough at this stage to pick pick a winner, because they all have pros and cons, so, you know, I might have to say that, um, you know, if you're, um, uh, you know, if you want the, you know, you want to spend the least amount, get the uni T because it's fine, but it's slow, and then if you want smallest, get the BK Precision one, and if you want the best cap range, get the BK Precision. If you want the most rugged, get the X-Tech, and oh, etc. It's just silly, really. Um, <clears throat> do I have any advice or tip for soldering um, SMD components? Well, uh, I've always wanted to do a whole blog on soldering SMD components. The key is to have a really good pair of tweezers. Um, a really, you know, top quality, really sharp anti-magnetic um, uh, tweezers. Because without those, you can't hold the components in place. That's the key thing. Um, the soldering iron tip, um, contrary to popular belief, does not have to be um, uh, small and like a little fine tip it you know just a um it's not on <coughs> no um just a small um chisel tip i'm not sure if you can see that but a chisel a very small chisel tip is is all you're gonna yeah i don't know it, not sure if you can see that but small chisel tip um like a one millimeter diameter um one millimeter width chisel tip is the best, not the conical, not the fine point conical ones because you can't get enough surface contact. They're okay for really ultra miniature stuff sometimes, but no, a nice conical tip that's not that small 
um, is really needed to get heat down onto the um, onto the pads and a pair of really good tweezers is the best way. You can get ones with the curved tip. I've got a whole set with both of them um, and the curved ones are useful sometimes but um, yeah um, SMD soldering and then um, tack down solder on one pad first and then so once you've got solder on one pad bring your component in with your tweezers um, uh, tack that one side on and then that holds the component in place and then you can solder all the other pins or if it's just a 0603 or something you just solder the other side and that's the easiest way to do it but there's tutorials out there on it there was one in silicon chip magazine I think which was okay there's various other videos so there you go SMD <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, I was talking about episode number 100, if anyone was asking. Um, am I going to give away some of the review meters in a competition of some sort? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'd rather just, if I am going to get rid of them, I think I'd rather just sell them and get some money, I think. Um, uh, but yeah, I, play, I haven't actually dropped them yet, so I don't know if they're going to fail after the drops. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'll see what's left of them. Um, but I don't plan to, no, because shipping them out of Australia is expensive. So it costs me money unless I ship them to someone in Australia. Um, you know, if I make it fair and ship stuff to overseas viewers, pardon me, um, overseas viewers, then, you know, it costs a lot of money to actually ship them. Okay, what have we got? Troll later. <laughs> Not worth my time, fucking Aussies. What? <clears throat> that would have been funny if it was on. Yeah, it would have been, but considering that I haven't used it for like a week, I don't think it's on. <laughs> so I was pretty safe, but yeah, that would have been funny. <clears throat> oh, oh no, here we go. Uh... Tell us about the board in the picture on the forum. Oh, okay. Someone asked that. Um, okay, I've got it. Um, <clears throat> there you go. There you go. That's the board. That's the board from the forum. Ta-da! And, yes, check it out. It's got four big rubber feet on it. Why, I hear you ask, does it have big rubber feet? Well, um, therein lies the story. It's actually a complete duplicate. Uh, get rid of all this crap. <clears throat> okay, it's a complete duplicate of, of another board, which I won't show too much of, but it's a complete duplicate. They're identical. Um, they're identical boards, um, may not look it, but trust me, if you actually look at the detail of them, they are actually, goes around that way, they are actually identical boards. And um, this was a, um, a product we were demonstrating at um, a trade show in the US, and um, it was designed, what, what we wanted is um, to show a transition, how you could transition from a development board, like, you know, a regular um, FPGA development board, through to an industrial version, which was this one that came in a fancy box and everything, and um, so that was an industrial version, and then we wanted um, something which displayed a, that represented um, a custom version um, of the actual product. Oh, let me adjust that camera. Yeah, a custom version of the product. So um, I had to come up with an idea of um, what would what a custom version of that would look like. But we still wanted it functional and and to work. But it, it needed to be sort of customy looking in some way. So I got the idea just to well make it red for starters to differentiate it because I love red boards. Um, so I made it red, and then I just added, um, I just added, um, I just made, I put on these curved round bits like this, and um, <laughs> I just, you know, put on some fancy little spokes in there, gold plating to make it all wanky, 
and, uh, you know, put a, a big rubber shock mount on there. And that way, there you go, rubber shock mount. And then that way, it could be attached up to the trade show wall. And we actually populated these and plugged in modules and they ran applications and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, that was the idea is that you transition from uh, a desktop um, demo development board to an industrial board and then to a custom board and you can keep the same modules etc etc so that was the idea um so yeah it's a bit of a wank but it worked and um and the thing is check it out how thick it is it's a four millimeter board okay this is a standard this is a standard 1.6 millimeter board and this board's actually four millimeters it's incredibly show to the main camera up there it's incredibly um, thick and um, that just made it look all manly and beefy and industrial and custom and yeah um, so that was the idea and because it was so thick the problem with really thick boards like this is that um, uh, they have different thermal um, thermal uh, aspects when you put them in the reflow oven they have different thermal properties and um, and we put through the same our assembler put all the components on because it's got a big um, it's got a big BGA thing there a big thousand pin or well, 686 pin BGA or something and and it's got tons of little 0402 parts and lots of ground planes and things and the assembler assembled that for us and um, it was just um, and all the a lot of the components tombstoned and they had all sorts of issues and they, it didn't solder properly and had to manually fix them all up because they couldn't get their thermal profile right. We didn't have enough time. It was a last minute thing um, just before the trade show and yeah, it just <laughs> it, it, it just all went um, pear shaped. But eventually they worked in the end and um, yeah, so really thick boards because they, they, they heat up differently and they hold the heat differently. So when they cool down, the board will actually, being so thick, um, it'll, it'll actually the heat will be retained in the ground planes, in the copper ground planes in the middle and as well as in the FR4 and um, it will um, so that means some one half of the component will cool quicker than the, might cool quicker than the other half, one half that's attached to the ground plane will even, in, even if you use thermal reliefs will cool down um, slower so your component can flip up and tombstone and you can get all sorts of other problems it's really tricky with a big four millimeter board like this it's can get real nasty so there you go uh, that's it that's that story uh, nothing more exciting than that but I, I just like you know the funky really sexy curved shape on it it's just oh, it's just pornographic it really is so that's a that's a really nice board uh, What does an average day at work look like for you? Ah, oh, I won't go into it. <laughs> Don't ask me that. Um, yeah, it's a manly board. <clears throat> Any input from your RF engineer buddy about the iPhone for antenna issue. I have no idea what the iPhone antenna issue is. Um, no, no idea. Sorry. <clears throat> Anyone got any other questions? Any update with the unusual oscilloscope phenomenon? Um, uh, no, I haven't done any update from that. Um, I st I'm, obviously, everyone knows what the mechanism is, um, which is ESD, um, but how it actually manifests itself in the front end is still a bit of a bit of a complete mystery. No one can really um, really explain it to you know total satisfaction. So, um, yeah, that Roden Schwartz. Another question: the Roden Schwartz. No, it's timed out. The Roden Schwartz are into oscilloscopes now, which is um, quite amazing. I didn't, I had no idea that um, Roden Schwartz. Somebody sent me that link, so thanks to whoever that was. Um, yeah, Roden Schwartz are into oscilloscopes. They've never been into a, that sort of gear. They've always been into um, RF 
stuff. They do fantastic. Roden Schwartz make great RF um, signal gens and um, stuff like that. The testing gear for you know RF high frequency stuff and yeah. But the um, oscilloscope looks really. It's very iPod-y type graphical touchscreen interface, drag and drop, and all that sort of you know. And it really lo really looks pretty schmick. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's more PR than anything else, I think. It's it's a might be a bit of a wank. Yes, I think Roden uh Roden Schwartz bought Haymeg. Yes, I think they that's right, I think they did. Um Haymeg makes some nice scopes. I got a Haymeg scope behind me here. This is a German made um Haymeg. Very confusing to use. Oh, <laughs> it's one of the most confusing analog scope. That's a combi digital and analog, but it's really really difficult to use, but very nice. Haymeg mic. Make, if you're after a second-hand scope, you can do a lot worse than Haymeg, let me tell you. Um, mm. I wish I could afford one. Yeah, I wish I could afford one too. I don't think I'm going to get uh, a demo unit in a hurry. They're like $10,000 or something, at least. <clears throat> oh, the te your text tried the 100 megahertz mod on the DS1052 and, it, and you bricked it. Any ideas how to get the old firmware back? No, sorry, I have no idea. 99.9% um, .9 of people have success, but there's the occasional person who bricks their scope, so... Sorry, that's a, that's a bummer. Um, how am I doing with AVR Studio? Um, yeah, I like it. AVR Studio is quite good. I've had no issues at all. Um, I really do quite like it, actually. Um, I'm really starting to warm to it, so there you go. I, might start using AVRs instead of PIX from now on. Um, but, you know, it depends on the app. But, yeah, I, I really like it. It's quite easy to use. It's all integrated. You just install install that and install WinAVR, and it just, just works now. Whereas years ago when I touched it, you had so many issues. And, oh, you know. Um, <clears throat> How seriously can we take a test of a microcontroller circuit on a simulator? Oh, I... Oh, I, and if you're talking about, um, like, the ones that are built into SPICE simulators, I wouldn't even bother. I don't know why anyone would want to simulate a micro in a, one of those SPICE packages. Just nuts. I've never tried. I've used the simulators, like, in MP Lab and um, stuff like that in the, from the manufacturer, and they... They can work reasonably well. It's just a matter of getting, um, you know, if you want a single step through. But I just prefer to run it on the real hardware. Um, but I, they, they, they work. Those simulators work no problems. If they're from the manufacturer, um, I wouldn't touch anything that comes with a crappy little, you know, some silly little spice package or something like that. I wouldn't trust it at all. But the ones that come with MP Lab and presumably, I don't know if AVR Studio even has one. I haven't even looked. Can anyone tell me if AVR Studio has a simulator? I assume it does. Um, yeah, it, it, it does. There you go. I haven't tried it. No idea. But um, yeah, the MP Lab one works pretty well. It's a bit limited in how you can get input-output signals actually into the pins and stuff. But I've 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 actually made it work. Um, in fact, in the article on the calculator watch, I um, I specifically I mentioned that um, I simulated all that first before I got the board so I had all the software and everything um, working and all I had to do was you know and it worked first time as soon as I got my boards in um, and actually wired it up it all just fired up first time so I was able to do it all on a simulator it was really great um, <clears throat> to AVR fanboy I knew it no not really Sorry, sorry to disappoint, but uh, Microchip still has the many advantages. <clears throat> I still like Microchip. I just happen to be using AVR for my current project. That's also I've had to get back into um, AVR Studio. Um, it's it's not as good. The AV the Win AVR. Um, I don't like the way they um, you can't ac directly access the register names, uh, the individual register bits by name like you can in um, uh, MP Lab. Um, you just, yeah, it's, 
that's just really annoying. Um, so I don't, I don't like that at all. But you can get around that by defining a, um, a macro, a single line macro thing, and then you can access individual bits. But it's just annoying. I don't like. I don't know why they don't put that in for individual bit access. I, the other AVR compilers do. I think I can remember the Code Vision one I've used many years ago. I think it did that. Um, but yeah, not in the GCC. A Win AVR. Um, <clears throat> da -da -da. Any more questions? Anyone? Questions? Hello? No, no one's got any questions. Are there any previous questions? We love you, Dave. I love you too. Yeah, the, um, it's really not as bombarded when I only have, you know, 20, 30 people or something. It's really not as, um, as, <laughs> as uh, you know, I really don't get bombarded as much, which is really, ah, it's good and bad, I guess. You going to pull any more practical jokes like you did on April 1st? You nailed me. <laughs> Nailed me good, it was so mad. Next year I'm going to be wise to you. <laughs> um, I wanted to, I'm glad I got a few people on that. Um, I wasn't sure if I, if, if I would or not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I really caught a few people with that one. And um, I was going to do something really, um, I might save it for next year maybe. I was going to do something really um, technical. I was going to build something and, um, you know, it was going to be, sort of fake and um, I was going to make it out to be real and I just, no, I was on holiday at the time I think, yeah, I think I was in Hawaii at the time and I just didn't have time to do it so I got back and I just filmed, got the idea for that one and did that in, you know, 10-15 minutes and that was it. Um, <clears throat> Can we see some more Don't Turn It On, Taken Apart uh, moments on the blog? I really like those episodes. Um, yep, no problem. I've got my... <clears throat> check it out. My Don't Turn It On, Take It Apart t-shirt. Ta-da! There you go. There's a screenshot. Uh, Superman shot. Ripping. Don't Turn It On, Take It Apart. It's part of the blog merchandise. Um, uh, what else have I got? I've got the... Um... No, no. And anyway, you've seen the others. I've got two others. Um, in the new video, I wear the new um, uh, feedback t-shirt. Everyone seems to love that. I, I, I love that feedback t-shirt too. So, um, uh, there you go. Buy the t-shirt. I don't make much from it. I make like 10%. It's bugger all, really. <laughs> it's, um, do I have any systems in particular for organizing resistors and other components? Um, I do. Um, oh god, I won't get it down, but maybe you can see, no, you won't be able to see up there, but I've shown it in my um, blog for the, um, where I go through my lab, but I've got, as far as resistors go, um, I sort them into um, E12 um, drawers, so E12 values, so 10, 12, you know, 15, 18, 22, etc, etc, um, I sort them into drawers like that, and then have all those values for that particular range in that one drawer. So in the 10 drawer, I'll have 10 ohms, 100 ohms, 1K, 10K, you know, etc, etc. So I find that's just the best way to organize resistors. Um, uh, caps, um, no, I don't have any um, drawer system. I usually do them in um, ranges. I won't do them in, the, in, in, the, in that sort of similar thing, but I've got um, kits, you know, I've got resistor kits and cap kits, and um, I do mainly SMD these days, so um, <clears throat> stuff like that. So I, I mainly, you know, exhaust my supply from those um, uh, kits. And then, um, as far as you know, capacitors, you know, like I've got a whole tubs full of um, SMD parts, and these will just be random, so they're not sorted. I've got a tub 
for, you know, tubs aren't even labelled. These are resistors. There you go. So they're all SMD resistors. I've, you know, in their original Farnell and um, other bags I've actually accumulated over the years. And I've got another tub for capacitors and another tub for semiconductors, another tub for ICs and stuff like that. So there's no systematic storage. I'm not that, you know, it's, it's really nice to have. Um, at some previous companies I've had really awesome storage systems in place where you'd just spend a week sorting out all the parts and it'd be brilliant. Um, <clears throat> what did you do to the broken plasma screen you showed a couple of videos back? Um, nothing. It just still sits there. Virtually don't use it at all. So that's why I didn't bother getting fixed. I got a quote for it from the efficient, from the manufacturer and it was just way too way too expensive. It's just crazy. I can buy a new TV for what it would cost to fix it. So, no, I've just got the black tape down the side and that's it. <clears throat> Dave, can you read resistor codes, the through-hole ones? I always forget the colour values. Yes, I've been able to read the resistor colour code since I was... You know, it's one of the first things you learn when you're a hobbyist. Um, you know, since I was six or seven or something like that, I could read the resistor colour code um, and I still can. Um, and it's still very useful. So, um, and people learn obscure little phrases like, you know, I can't even remember some of the phrases because I don't remember them, but I just remember black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, etc., etc. Um, yeah, I just know them off the top of my head. Um, so I don't remember little phrases and things like that to remember the color code sequence. So, just comes from many, many years of, um, using using resistors <clears throat> any advice for ground planes um oh god ground planes are um uh, un unless you're talking oh it no oh, it gets real tricky uh, split ground planes as opposed to one continuous ground plane um but it all has to do with return loop currents um, so it depends you want to keep a continuous ground plane if you've got your source over here your power supply over here your chip over here then um, you want a continuous if your if your power track goes ugh, I can't draw if you I could get the whiteboard out but I won't um, I could go on forever and you have to keep a continuous ground plane it you know, regardless of the split issue or not you have the ground plane has to be continuous over the whole um, the whole uh, power track loop so if you break it there that's when you get all sorts of um, EMC problems and all sorts of things because the if you if you've got one big ground plane like this and you route your power track like you know snaky around like that even though it's one big ground plane um, your return current will actually follow underneath that track because that's the path of least inductance. So it will actually follow that path. It won't just spread all through the ground plane. It will actually follow the track. And some people have actually um, somehow proven that they've... I saw a video once that, um, that demoed that in some way. And you can actually see that the current does actually trace... Um, uh, you know, you think got this one big solid ground plane, yet the current will actually um, tend to flow through the least uh, inductive path, path, which is under the track. It's it's really quite remarkable. Um, it's one of the more obscure things known about um, you know grounding and you know high frequency stuff and things like that. Anyway. Um, do you always keep your lab, or lab organized? No way. Um, it's a mess. I'm not sure if you can see the desk, but they you know, it's just filled with crap. And, and, and that's really tidy, um, let alone my one at work. Um, I don't... It's nice when it is tidy. If you see the... Um, if you see, watch the blog where I do a tour of the lab and it's all neat and tidy. Um, that is because the wife made me clean up the whole thing. Uh, the two of us actually cleaned up the lab. We spent like half a day cleaning it up before I did that video. So that's why it looks really clean. So I completely cheated there. Um, but no, I like to live in a mess. Well, I don't like to. I'm just lazy. I don't clean up at all. I just move things to one side and it just gets worse and worse. 
So, well, yeah, so when I've got to do a review or something like that, like the $100 meter shootout I filmed on the most of it, a lot of it on the weekend, and I had to clean up the bench first before I could get space to put all these meters. It's crazy. <clears throat> More questions? No one's got any questions. Might have to go on to... Oh, there we go. Oh. Do you have any other near-death experiences along the lines of the LCR tweezers? Could be a good idea to blog for dangers of electricity. Um, yeah, anything over 12 volts... Well, anything over 5 volts DC scares the shit out of me. I don't like high voltages at all. I'm not a fan of high voltages and I avoid, you know, I just avoid them at all possible. One horror story, one that when I was a kid, um, I was repairing our TV. Um, and uh, it was, I. it turned out I had a complete mental brain fart that day and I didn't remember it was a live chassis TV. And um, I'm not sure if they still sell live chassis TV, I doubt it. Um, but back then, the, all the metal, internal metal parts were actually at 240 volt potential. They were connected directly to the um, mains, mains connection. And the only thing that separated you from it was the plastic case. But when you worked on it, everything was live. And um, it, 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 all, I think in the end, it only came down to a dicky coax cable at the connector at the back. And you think, the antenna connector at the back, you know, the coax go into that, surely that wouldn't be 240, but yep, it was. And I grabbed that, and it threw me right across the room, and, and I, it, ripped my, it ripped my hand open, and because um, I got caught on the metal as I got thrown across the room, and that shook me up and scared the shit out of me. So, ah, oh, I've hated high voltages ever since. I don't, that's why I don't work on power stuff. I'm a microelectronics guy. Um... You know, even just 240 scares the shit out of me, let alone working on Tesla coils and shit like that. So, as much fun it would, as it would be, um, I don't like high energy at all. I love, you know, uh, micro power stuff. <clears throat> Dave, how many multimeters do you have lying around? Must be over 20. Um, yeah, I, it's um, 18 was the last count at, I think... Um, last count when I did the one where the meter just falls over. Um, but I've got more than that because I didn't include handheld, um, I didn't include like the uh, little uh, tiny pocket ones and things like that. So yeah, it'd be over 20 multimeters lying around. Um. <clears throat> Can you use a Zener to protect a voltage regulator from over voltage without blowing out the zener if the voltage goes over the zener polyfuse or something better um well you can't unless you put a series resistor limiting the current to the zener but nobody uses uh, not many people use a zener to protect a, a voltage rig unless you're talking um lower power stuff where the series resistor doesn't matter but um uh, no i mean um the thing with protection devices is it's a trade-off between um, actually pre uh, limiting the inrush current to protect your protection device if you know what I mean um, you can or you simply rely on the fact that you're going to blow your protection device first before you blow your regulator or other circuitry that's the that's the idea so it's a trade-off um, so yes you can use a Zener to protect a regulator or something but um, so the answer is yes, technically. Um, yes, a polyfuse would, if you can get it low enough, that's designed to protect the zener and the regulator at the same time. But yeah, so essentially yes, but there's lots of things in there that you've got to take into consideration. Um, I'm probably going to have to do a blog on input protection and stuff like that. Um, I've been meaning to do that, um, but I don't know what approach to take for that yet. Uh. Yeah, as a Sparky, 240 volts is low. Yeah, I don't... Oh, I I was... I remember I was up in the roof about five years ago and I was... Uh, no, I won't say that. <clears throat> Technically illegal. <clears throat> no. Anyway. Um, 
Anyway, I have actually cut through a mains cable before. It, I was sure I switched off the mains power and um, I cut through it and bang, I took a chunk out of my pliers actually. It was so much energy it actually chipped my, um, my actual cutting pliers. Big beefy, top quality, you know, pliers. It just took a big chunk out of it. Crazy. Um, so that's how much energy is in the mains. So be careful, kiddies. Um, how much do I really need to spend on a simple variable voltage current bench power supply with digital readout just for small voltages and currents? Um, you don't need to spend much at all. And hopefully I've got a new project coming along which um, might be suitable for that. So stay tuned. Um, but yeah, you don't have to spend much. I mean, people buy these huge, big, beefy, you know, 30 volt, you know, 5 amp power supplies or something. I, you know, unless you're working on power stuff, you, you don't need it. Um, you know, less than 12 volts, any, you don't need 30 volts either. Um, you know, 0 to 12 volts is just fine. And, you know, 1 amp is heaps. You know, if you're working on little micro stuff, well, you know, 100 milliamps is just fine. So... You know, really, um, yeah, you don't need a, one of those big power supplies. You, you don't have to spend much. You can build it yourself. There's lots of build-it-yourself ones. Um, so, yeah, spend as little as possible. I, it depends what you're into. Like, you know, I've got a big 40 amp, um, uh, 40 amp continuous supply here. I almost never use it because I don't need anything that takes, you know, anything over a couple of amps usually, let alone 40 you know, it's just nuts. Um, <clears throat> there was a question back there I missed. Huh? Which microcontroller do you use mostly f C or assembly? Um, I use C. I've mentioned this before. I use C almost exclusively um, with inline assembly if I ever need to for some reason, um, speed or just simple um iron on the microchip there's some times that you have to use um to get timing to set up various things you might have to use a couple of lines of inline assembly but no nah, i haven't touched assembly for for a full project for many many years um c is just so much better i don't know why anyone persists with programming in assembler i've called assembler you know i've called them dickheads for programming in assembler and you know they're just they're just diehards really and I'm sorry, but, you know, I don't care how good you are at assembly, any half-decent competent C programmer can whip a project together ten times quicker than you can in assembly. It's just, you know, I'm sorry. Assembly is just convoluted and, um, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a slow way to develop code. Uh, regardless of how many modules you've programmed before and you could, you know, you can drop them in and it's just, God, no. Assembly, don't touch it. <clears throat> I'm planning to design a do-it-yourself LCR meter in my holidays. I saw that you just ordered some other LCR meters, so would you do a quick video review on my project if I assembled a sample? Um, sorry, probably not. Um, yeah, I get asked that all the time. It's a blanket, almost a blanket rule now that I don't review people's individual little projects. I just, I, I, I can't, sorry. It, <laughs> it's, um... I, I would love to, but I, you know, I don't think I have the time, and and the blog turns into a whole review fest, and that's, you know, I've got some people complaining there's too many reviews and things. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> C18. C18 is horrible. Not even more Sealy compliant. Oh, everyone craps on about C compliance. Bloody hell, it's, it's near enough. It's supposed to be ANSI compliant. It's near enough. C18's all right. There's nothing wrong with C18. <clears throat> People bitch about GCC's not properly compliant and all that sort of rubbish. And then other people claim it is and, oh, jeez, no. Stop bitching about, all you programmers out there, stop bitching about C compliance. Ugh, nothing I hate worse. They're perfectly fine C compilers. <clears throat> Maybe not optimised as well as some others, but that's a different issue entirely. Um, nobody programs in freaking perfectly ANSI, you know, Kerrynham and Richie C or ANSI C or something like that. It's, oh God. Uh. 
Oh, I better scroll down. I'm still, sorry, I'm still way up in the chat window. <clears throat> Do I use high tech or any other third party compiler? Yes, I used to love high tech. Um, I used to have the high tech C compiler. I used to do all my C stuff in high tech, um, but now I do. Um, I only use high tech for the 16 series, um, and I use the microchip compilers for the other um, 16 and 32 bit PIC micros. Um, and with, for the AVR, I've used Code Vision C compilers, and I've used um, a couple of other brands I can't remember for various um, micro cores over the years. So yeah, third party ones can often be a hell of a lot better than than the um than the equivalent um ones from the manufacturers. So yes, I do like the like like the Code Vision a AVR one is brilliant. Um it's so much better than the I had, and that was years ago. So much better than the um GCC Win AVR one. Um heaps better, especially for the beginner, I think. Um so yes, I use third-party compilers all the time. The high-tech one, because Microchip bought high-tech C. It's so good. That's an Australian company up in Queensland, and they actually bought, um, I think they paid like $30 million for them or something. So yeah, the guy's been running high-tech C for, I don't know, 20 years or something, and um, yeah, they were bought out by Microchip. What's next for the blog after multimeters? Can you tell us some of the things you want to cover? Um, uh, <clears throat> thanks, George. Um, oh, geez. Uh, as in what? The, the future of the blog? Is that what you mean? Um, because there's some stuff maybe happening. Well, not happening with the blog, but there's some stuff coming up. Um, which might see me in the US in October. So there could be a Dave road trip in October, maybe, possibly, in the US. Um, and oh, another thing is um, the end of, towards uh, the end of this month, I'm gonna be in an engineering documentary. Um, I, well, I hope so. Um, uh, the filmmakers come in here to the lab to film some um, stuff. I can't, I shouldn't tell you any details about it, but um, it's an Australian, um, thing so it's an Australian engineering industry thing and they're going to interview me and a couple of other major people um, and if I'm major but <laughs> I guess I am now because I run a video blog so there you go um, but yeah I'm going to be interviewed so hopefully I don't end up on the cutting room floor because um, I'd love to see myself in this um, engineering documentary it should be really good because the guy who's doing it makes some really first-class videos and stuff so um, yeah I'm really Quite excited by that. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, George, sorry I didn't finish your question. Um, what's next for the blog after multimeters? Um, well, I'd, you know, as far as, uh, can you be more specific as far as um, equipment reviews or the future? Sorry, I don't. Uh, don't know. I'd love to do oscilloscopes and stuff like that, but they'd. Oh, you know, I well, I don't get given oscilloscopes because they're not um, cheap, so I'd have to get them on a loaner. Um, and I, I guess I could. I've got a few contacts now who will loan me um, some gear, actually loan me pretty much, I guess, almost anything I want. So I'm sure I could, if I pushed hard enough, I could get pretty much anything. I could probably get that new Roden Schwartz one if I, if I asked, because um, I do have a profile now. So at least I can, um, you know... Uh, I have a little bit of clout with the manufacturers so I can actually get uh, equipment reviews. Um, <clears throat> Where will we be able to see the doc? Which doc? Which document? Are you talking about the multimeter review document? <clears throat> that will be up when the blog's up, um, I guess. <clears throat> What's your time, amigo? What is the time? Oh, 8.56. It is almost 9 o'clock. Thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, I might call it, might, might make this a short one. Well, I should make this a short one today. Um, sorry about being late. Um, I, yeah, I, I mean, an hour just flies by like that. It's just ridiculous. Um, 
Oh, sorry, Doc is the documentary. When is it going to be up? Um, I don't know. I will um, hopefully promote it on my blog, so you'll be able to... Um, it's going to be released online first. Um, so, I, yeah, as soon as it's done, um, it's been filmed end of July, um, end of this month. It's July already, yes. Um, end of July, and I don't know how long it's going to take him to edit. Um, but... Uh, <clears throat> How many hours do you work a day? As few as possible, <laughs> is always the answer. Um, standard, standard eight hour day, um, unless there's something, um, unless there's a mad scramble for something, and um, you know, I usually don't spend too much longer than that. <clears throat> the EEV plus USA equals awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like, um, it, I don't, it's not in writing yet, but it looks like I will be in the US in October. So, there you go. I can't tell you any details at all about that. Um, but I will be over there, hopefully. <clears throat> and um, I'll probably be taking a, a holiday too over there. So, um, yeah, it's, um, and there will be opportunity to come and meet me. So, um, yes. All you Yanks out there, you can uh, you can turn up and say hi. Hopefully, um, LA. By the way, it'll be in LA. Um, so, yes, there will be opportunity for to come and formally meet me and actually participate. If um, yes, you may actually be able to participate in a thing which I'm doing over there. So there you go. There's a bit of a. Uh, Here's a bit of something. Could you do a step dance? What? A step dance? I don't dance. Sorry. <laughs> when Germany? Um, sorry, no, I had no plans for Germany. I've been to Germany. I love Germany. Germany's cool. I was there five, six years ago now, quite a few years ago. <clears throat> Disneyland, yes, I will be going to, hopefully, yes, I will be going to Disneyland, so there you go. Um, I will be very, very close to Disneyland. <clears throat> Europe, sorry, no plans for Europe. The wife wants to go back to France. She's obsessed with going back to Europe. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yes, I will be going to Disney. Hopefully, I'm pretty darn sure I'll be going to Disneyland when I'm in L.A. Um, I didn't, last time I was in L.A., I went to Universal Studios, uh, which was really cool, but um, yeah, yes, I'll be going to Disneyland, beauty. And the wife wants to go to Harry Potter World over in Orlando. So over in, where is it? Is it in Universal Studios in Orlando, I think? Um, the new Harry Potter World, she's obsessed with that. So oh, I think we're going to have to end up in Orlando as part of our trip to go to Harry Potter World. Apparently she, yep, she really wants to go to Harry Potter. Oh, crazy. <clears throat> you go to Disneyland once a year, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to do it. I almost did it last time I was over there um, for work. I was in, um, I was in um, San Jose, and um, I wanted to drive down to... I had some time off, and I wanted to drive down to Disneyland, and oh, I never got around to it, so I'm really quite excited to get back there in October. Um, I almost went to Legoland. Um, I stayed in a place in... Um, it was um, outside of San Diego somewhere, north of San Diego. I can't remember the name, but there was a Lego land there. And I'm not sure if it's the big one, but I, I didn't get to visit Legoland. That, that would have been cool. <clears throat> So, any more questions, guys, before I call it quits? Because um, I've got some stuff to do before I head off uh, head off to work today. Have you used Cypress PSOC? Um, no. Um, I've got access to a dev board for that, but I haven't, I haven't used it. They do look pretty cool. Um, I've considered them a couple of times for various projects, but, yeah, they're, they're a neat, neat little thing. I'm not sure of their analog performance, so I'm not sure if it's that that terrific, um, or how much money it actually saves you, you know, it might save you a bit on part integration or something like that, but 
No, I haven't tried it. <clears throat> Dave, make your lab an amusement park. We can watch you destroy multimeters. <laughs> step right up, step right up. Sideshow Alley. That's me. <clears throat> Have you received my launch pad yet? No, I haven't heard a thing about launch pad. I ordered three of them. Um, haven't, haven't heard a thing. <clears throat> No worries. Thanks for the live show. Thanks for turning up, guys. I was going to do more. I was probably going to take some stuff apart and do things, but no, it's just don't have enough time in an hour. I want you to rant on and answer a few questions. It's all over. Have you ever thought about buying a DeLorean? Oh, yes, I want a DeLorean. I so want a DeLorean. If I was rich, I would get myself a DeLorean and fit it out. That would be my hobby project, would be to fit out a DeLorean with the full cockpit and the full flux capacitor and the whole, the, the whole works. Um, a guy in Sydney's got a DeLorean. I'm not sure how many are in Sydney, but um, the famous author, author Matthew Riley, um, his books are quite, um, quite good if you're into those sort of things. He's an author here in Sydney who self-published and became a huge hit. And um, yeah, he's got, he owns a DeLorean and he drives it around the northern beaches of Sydney. I haven't seen it yet, but um, apparently it breaks down all the time. It's just apparently just shocking, shockingly unreliable. And it breaks down and he has to call up the NRMA, which is our road service, and get them to <laughs> get them to restart his, his DeLorean all the time. But um, yeah, lucky bastard, he can afford a for the DeLorean. He's also got a full-size um, replica of the frozen hand solo, you know, in carbonite. Oh, very cool. That's what you can do when you're a rich author, I guess. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I would, I, know, I would whack the plate on it, definitely. I'd whack the out-of-time plate, and I'd have Mr. Fusion, and oh, I'd be, I'd look like a complete dick driving that thing around, but that would be awesome. Yeah, so if I was rich, that's what I'd spend my time on, buying a DeLorean and doing it up. Yep. Uh, apparently you can buy a new one. I think you can buy, this. I think I heard mumblings of some company, they sell a new DeLorean. You can build it or something or, or I don't know, something like that. So I um, have to look into that, but yeah, it's a US thing. You know, you wouldn't be able to buy it here, I'm sure. Anyway, I better head off, guys. Thanks for turning up. And um, yeah, it wasn't as big as the last uh, live show. It wasn't as full on because there weren't as uh, fewer viewers. And um, apparently, Jerry's Ellsworth show wasn't uh, watching because um, they're on their Independence Day. So happy Independence Day to all you Yanks out there. I know it's a big deal, you know. And. Uh, same, same as Australia Day here, but we just, you know, we just have a barbie and that's about it, you know, it's a day off work. And, um, cool. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.